Mike, Donovan, Sadiq, Dimitri K. We are in the house and we are here to make sure that you guys get the information that you guys need. That's it right. is Tuesday. Today's the 19th? 18th. 18th. I'm always a day ahead or day whoa, whoa, whoa. So uh, I'm just in a hurry to get up out of here, I guess. Okay. But uh, welcome to the show, you guys. This is the Donovan Sadiq portion. I would like to start by saying thank you to you guys that, that subscribe and look look at our channel. For those of you guys who have been asking me, and I just figured it out thanks to Dimitri K. The advice show has changed their name to? Uh, the, the African Diaspora for, something. Yeah, see, I, I got to say this to, to my, my man Phil. You want to keep everything as simple as possible. Let me see, African Diaspora Network or yeah. something. I, I'm not saying he can't change because it is his channel, but... You're going to lose a lot of subscribers because they don't know how to, you know, I don't even know how to spell it and go into that and think about it. But anyway. I don't think you lose subscribers. It just, you it's know. Just, it, it makes it harder. It, and most people just who, who follow it just yeah, gonna refer follow to him it. as the advice show. Because yeah. that's what most of us know it as, you know. Right, right. So uh, so if you're looking for it, it's still out there. It's just that he changed the name and it, it's going to still do great, wonderful things. But we're going to beat you out to South Africa, Phil. That's for damn sure. <laughs> so, um. Again, thank you guys for coming to the show. Don't believe the high Donovan Sadiq section. Before I start. The, the African Diaspora News Channel. News Channel. Okay, so that's what it's called. So if you guys are looking for it, if you're interested, please uh, subscribe, like, and like I said, he's a very in informative brother. And as the, the black media, we as black media need to support each other as well and uh, put those good information things out there. Behind me right now, for those of you guys that are watching the YouTube channel, by the way, Demetria K's uh, last thing got flagged because we had a little clip of good times, but it'll be up as soon as they, they clear it because, again, every show I put up, I put up fair use. Yeah. And it was Father's Day, and so that was a Father's Day segment, and the segment that I used was the one where James uh, in Florida and the gang, mm -hmm. you know, JJ joined the gang or oh, you know, yeah, yeah. that thing, and I thought that would, you know... The importance of having a father in a family, is, especially in the black community, is so important because that is the central figure, the protector, the warrior, the leader. And uh, when you took James out of the good times, it changed the whole dynamic of the show. Right. It, it totally did because it's just a different aspect. So that, that video will be up, but it, it is still on the podcast and a lot of things. So it'll be up soon. And then it's also on her Facebook uh, page. So go to Facebook and you can see the video there, but it'll be up on YouTube soon enough. Behind me right now is a green screen. If you would pull the green screen down, you would see a door. And that's reality. And behind that door is probably my cat or my dog or whatever, and that's <laughs> reality. And that's what we mean by don't believe the hype. Don't, don't just go with the sound bites and what sounds good or, oh, wow, you know, she's light-skinned and, oh, he's this and he plays good music. Go behind the scenes and really research for yourself what they're trying to get you to do. Right. That's what reality is. And all we do is provide you the information. I, we get a lot of hate, at least I do. I get a lot of hate, <laughs> uh, hate comments on, on our show and stuff. And that's okay because at least you got an opinion. You got a lot of people out here that don't have an opinion. Right. So, so let's get into it. Let us say. I'll do anything for you. Let us say. Get your head out of my mouth. Let us say.
my partner, Demetri K. from the Demetri K. Show, 3 p.m. Facebook Live, Pacific Standard Time. So, you guys, check her show out. What I want to talk about today, and it's a very important thing, this week it's going to be very important. It is, they have finally, after 10 years, have put the reparations issue on the congressional thing. The media is going to come out. They're going to make a big old spectacle saying, right. see, look, we're, we're, we're paying attention. We're going to talk about it. Talk. Talk about reparations. Now, before we get into it really deep, because I know Dee's got a lot on her mind, I see her wheel spinning. Did they talk to the Asians when they gave them their reparations? Uh, not that I can recall. They didn't talk. They cut the check. The Jews, Bernie Sanders, got to give him some respect. And he said, Joe Biden. He, and, well, I got to give Bernie respect. He said, no, I ain't for no goddamn reparations. Well, not for black for, people. Yeah, but I say not for us. Yeah, for black people. Unfortunately, he's not going to get my vote. But I got that. That's his stance. Got to respect it. But how are you for reparations for your people, but you're not for my people? First law of nature: self-preservation. Exactly. And you know, I want you guys to really understand how important this thing is. What they are doing. And let me make a quick narrative. They are going to bring Danny Glover up. Now, Danny Glover is a Pan-Africanism. He's in the Pan-Africanism. Mm-hmm. Okay. He is not the person that should be talking and representing. Why not? The There's reparations. nothing wrong with Pan Africanism. No, no. Garvey, that was his whole movement. Was no, Pan no, exactly. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, he is not the one that is qualified to talk on it I on reparations. See, you know. Oh, go ahead. In my opinion. Yeah. Because what they do is, and it's the same gimmick they use all the time. They get this successful Negro. And they say, look, he made it. And I don't know, I'm not saying Danny Glover is an awesome uh, activist. But that's not the person I think you should have. Well, who talking. should do it? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see some lawyers. Because we're talking about money here. Who? I mean, because the reason why, and, and mm -hmm. I get what you're saying, because there's actually, there's a lot of conversation around actually who should do it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because Malcolm X talked about how a lot of times they'll get the celebrities and this, that, and mm -hmm. the other to speak for um, the African American community, the black community, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. Now, I hear what you said, because I would prefer to have somebody like Dr. Claude Anderson go right. and speak about reparations. Okay. 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 But I'm okay with people who have some celebrity. Danny Glover is a well known celebrity. Mm -hmm. He's going to, because to me, it's almost like. Uh, Kaepernick. Okay. People give Kaepernick a hard time too. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no, he just got all these millions of dollars, this, that, and the other. But it's like it cost this dude a lot of money, his career, and everything. Mm -hmm. And I take a step back before he took a knee. He didn't have to do that. Right. He's well off. He's good looking. But he's, he, what, what, what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He's got all this fame. You know, all he's just he didn't need to sure. do that. Sure. But he did. Danny Glover's got millions on top of millions of dollars in fame sure. and fortune. He don't have to no, do that. No, I'm a big, I'm a big Danny uh, Glover uh, to fan. Me, to I mean, he's uh, awesome to in Coates, too. He doesn't have to do that either. But the point that I'm making is a lot of times, because somebody, I put the uh, Tanashi Coates um, thing on there because he's the one that wrote the thing about mm -hmm. reparations in 2014. And he's also going to Congress with Danny Glover. Somebody says, well, he's not qualified. And I said, why isn't he qualified? And it couldn't give me a good answer. I said, well, I would rather have somebody who has some sort of pull to go and get the attention. Same thing like with Kim Kardashian. People say, well, why is she doing it? God damn it, she getting black people free. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoop de whoop up the street don't have that kind of pull. Right, right. Kim could still be naked, right. doing naked stuff on Instagram, but she's taking the time to take her platform to go mm -hmm. help get people free. So I don't have a problem with that. Right, but see, see this is why I say he's mm -hmm. not, he's not qualified. I'm not saying he's not qualified to talk about it, but what I'm saying is, he is justifying talk. We don't need to talk. We don't need to talk. Okay, but we they, need wait, wait, wait. We need lawyers up there that are going to say this is what it's going to cost. This is we're talking tangibles. I don't. We don't have time to talk. We we we're, the only talking we should do is to take the ten trillions annually. And how is the United States government going to cut us our checks? I get that, but goddamn it, that ain't what's going to happen right now because they Why ain't not? been trying. Um, because they just haven't, they haven't, we haven't, we haven't been at this point 
ever in the reparation movement. And when I say this mm -hmm. point, yeah, we've had John Conyers and a whole bunch of other people talk about it, put it on the, you mm -hmm. know, the, the Congress floor, this, that, and the other. But we are now seeing more and more black people galvanize. We've got people calling themselves the ADO West and a whole host of other people are galvanizing and saying, hey, you know what? They're right. We don't need to give up our vote until we get our money mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. So now we're at this point. Then why don't you have an ADOS person up there talking as well? Well, how do you know that he's not? He's not a, he's, he's come out and said he's not a. He's okay, a, but what difference does it make? It doesn't make a difference. Don't what I'm saying is, though, why don't you have an ADOS member up because there Because they haven't this? invited an ADOS member. Right. They, they, they're, they're doing the same ploy they right. always do, a swerve. We can't keep shooting ourselves no, in the I'm, foot. That isn't what I'm saying, though. But you, you are saying no, that. No, I'm not. Okay, what you saying? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, okay, you can have Danny Glover up. You can have the other guy, the writer of the thing. Mm -hmm. What about the other people that should be involved in this and I don't even think we have a conversation. Well, I'm asking you, like, who? It doesn't matter. You need lawyers up there. You need a member of the ADOS up there. But they're not there at this moment. But who's... And, that, and, and, and this goes back to what I'm trying to tell you. It's they're the same They're not going to write us a check. Right? They're that not going to okay, write forget the check. a check. <laughs> who is making the decisions of who gets to talk and who doesn't? Okay, do we even know what they're going to go say? Yeah, they're talking about... About what? Reparations. Okay, they're talking about reparations. Do we know what exactly? Do you know if they're going to go and say, hey, write us a check today? Do you know exactly no, what they're going to be saying? I don't know what they're going to be saying, but what I'm saying is Congress, Congressional Black Talkers, these people have been up there for years. I get it. I understand it. They could have had hearings that within themselves to deal with this issue mm -hmm. and be ready for it. These talks should have been happening. What they're doing is they're, they're, they're throwing a curveball at us again because it always works. Well, we know that. We, I think that's a given that okay. they, being the uh, CBC, Congressional, Congressional Black, Black Talkers, Con uh, Con uh, caucus, we know that's what they're doing. We, we mm -hmm. know there doesn't need to be any research or any of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff because it's been researched to death. Like I said, I would that they would invite somebody like Dr. Claude Anderson mm -hmm. up there because he has it down pat. He has his power economics thing, talks about group economics and the whole nine. He understands what it is that needs to be done. But until that point, see, that's the kind of stuff sure. we need to be pushing for okay. instead of saying, oh, well, this person shouldn't go. Because when I ask people, well, then who should go? Nobody really knows. It just know, well, they shouldn't go. Well, Demetri K should go. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> Demetra K should go. All expenses is paid, of course. Right. But <laughs> by the point of making this, well, then we should be getting behind that. Like, we should get behind somebody like Dr. Claude Anderson and say, right. this is who, but see, the problem, tell you, the problem with this is, mm -hmm. within the ADOS community, there's a huge schism. Schism. The, I, I, for a fact, know that the leader, um, Yvette Cornell, mm -hmm. who, is the, who is the one that kind of um, re- Invented the yeah. ADOS because it's not a new concept. Right, and there's another guy named Tone Talk. Yes, he's, he's really she has good. spoken very ill of mm -hmm. Dr. Claude Anderson, very disrespectfully. And so there's that whole skin. There's a lot of people who like Dr. Claude Anderson, but you can't go around disrespecting people. And so Absolutely. when we say, oh, well, Danny Glover shouldn't go or Tanashi Coates shouldn't go, um, and then we don't have a person who should go, that's problematic because it just seems like we just. Like, we want the progress, but we don't want to get behind the right well, person who should go. No, and, okay, and I agree with you wholeheartedly what you're saying, but here's the thing. Who made the decision that Danny Glover's going to talk? Doesn't matter, okay? Right. It doesn't matter. Here's my thing. Congressional black talkers are up there doing what they're got to do. That's fine. Louis Farrakhan should be up there speaking. Okay, well, you know that's not going to happen. Right. But then, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the same curve. And so my point of this heated debate right here is this issue, regardless of what side you're on on it, who can talk, who doesn't need to talk, we need to pay attention. Well, yeah. And I think to what's been said. Because we have been paying attention. Mm -hmm. I think that's why, I know that's why it's going back. Because even Tanashi Coates said when he wrote the thing in 2014, mm -hmm. Up until now, he didn't think that it was going to go as far as it did. He thought he was just, you know, revisiting it. That's because the black it. media kept right. focused. And so they are, now it's getting more attention and more traction because it's more, because I remember back in the 90s, mm -hmm. um, when my mom was like, hey, they taking, um, and I think it was Dr. Claude Anderson, if I'm not mistaken, um, they're taking the uh, case of reparations back to Congress, and, you know, we need to all sign this petition. I remember signing mm -hmm. And then they basically said, don't come back to us with this mess no more. Right. That was in the 90s, and so people went away. Right. But now people are much more awake, and they're not going away. So 
I'm, no, I'm, I, I don't think people are awake. I think they're just they're just tired. Well, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm interested in seeing what's going to come out of the talks. What they're going to say, nobody really knows. Uh, but I, I just, I think we really need. Not just saying this about you, because I've talked a lot of people. We need to get out of the habit of shooting down people who are trying to help us. Like we're not at a we. Yeah, we shouldn't send. You know, okay, we have problems with people like Steve Harvey. Okay, I was going to bring that up. Just right. Now. Because we know he his thing was self-serving. We don't know it. And I know, for, you know, Danny Glover to be an activist. Yeah, sure, so do I. So. Like I said, I loved him in The Color Purple. Oh, no. That is how you're supposed <laughs> to. That, that, that brother wasn't acting. Right. But, we, you know, let's see what they got to say instead right. of, you know, where they shouldn't go. But, but what I'm saying is. Danny is how old? Danny's got to be in his late 60s. Or 70s. Right. He got, like, right. <laughs> right. No, no, no. Big, big props to him for yeah. being an invite. But what I'm saying is. We shouldn't, I want everybody, we don't need to be talking. We know that. Okay, we, we know that. What I'm saying is, along with Danny Glover, there should be some lawyers there. There should be some but economists there. But we don't know there. who's going to be there. I know. But, yeah. And, and, and isn't that funny? The issue that has to deal with us, and we don't even know what's going on. Well, I say this, big ups to Danny Glover yes. and the whole host of all the other people who are serious about getting reparations for black people for going up there on your day off where you could be golfing with white folks and doing mm -hmm. all the other stuff because you got your money. Because that's right. the thing. People are saying they got their money. Right, but see, that's why I'm skeptical and I'm cautious. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not here to bash Danny Glover or any successful person. But what I'm saying is it's the curveball. They use the same thing because it always works. Hey, come on, y'all. Trump ain't so bad. Give the man a chance. Right. Uh, your girl, uh, the singer. Who? Uh, Michelle, what's her name is? I mean, Chrisette Michelle. Yeah, Chrisette I mean, Michelle. You know, I'm she, trying she, to unite everybody. No, she was, no, she was trying no. to cash a check. See, see and, and that's what I'm saying. I like Danny Glover, and I'm, I'm just saying, be careful. So they're actually going on Juneteenth. That's Juneteenth, when they're supposed right. to go. And I think it's important that you guys pay attention. I'm not saying sit there and watch C-SPAN and all that. The thing is, don't get too excited, is what I'm saying. Because we, uh, Generation Fail especially likes to make a big deal over nothing. Well. Okay. And, and when I mean by big deal, they'll say, see, we're doing something. No, you're not doing anything. We need tangibles. I'm going to stick on that. That is my thing. Tangibles. If We don't need to talk. They didn't talk for the Jews. They didn't talk for the Asians. They damn sure ain't talking, uh, giving all these benefits to the Hispanics. Mm-hmm. No question that you're not even a damn citizen, they're giving them benefits. Right. So why is it when it comes to black folks, we got to talk? Well, Cut the fucking check. I'm going to tell you what the issue is. And I was just trying to see here because it actually is going to take place tomorrow to see if there's any, you know. Why isn't Demetra K been invited to Washington? <laughs> well, I would say this. Because, you know, you said there was not, not very much talking. I'm sure there was some talking. But not as much as the talking as they're doing with black people as, as far as reparations. The one thing, and I could be wrong, but I doubt it, that's missing that those other people had <laughs> was unity. Okay. Those people stick together. Yes. We are slowly but surely learning that we need to thank, stick together. Thank you, black media. But, so that's missing. I mean, you think about it, like I say, even with the, within the ADOS community and, the, you know, a whole host of other black medias and things like that, people fight. Yeah. Like I see, um, last week, um, two people, it wasn't you, <laughs> two people, um, I won't say their names. Mm -hmm. You guys, if you, if you watch black media, you probably know who they are. They're fighting. Mm -hmm. It's a guy who's, you know, very well known in the black community and a, um, a girl or a lady, I should say, mm -hmm. who's kind of come on the scene within the last... I guess year, mm -hmm. they're calling, well, she's calling him, you fat mother ever big mm -hmm. neck, whoop de whoop, right. you blah, 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 you blah, and he's trying to be cordial about it, but he was just basically saying, I didn't know that, you know, you know, it was going to turn out like this. Right, and, I didn't know you were a hoe. But it was just like, and y'all trying to represent the black community, they, yeah. they, like, people really go to your channels to see if you have some wisdom to give them and y'all arguing about nigga shit right, right. you know so that's what's missing with black people we have, we don't have a, we lack unity we don't like if somebody tries to become a leader you got a whole drag set them down. yeah drag them down. somebody tries to drag them down and say instead of saying okay let's see what you can do 
everybody, you got all these people who want to be the leader. I want to be the big, you know, the HNIC. I want to be the king daddy of the conscious movement. And, all, you know, it's like, that's not helping us. So when you go back to saying, well, we need to have a conversation, why do we need to? Yeah. We know that's, you know, but some see, of them say, but, okay, niggas, we got, we, we working on right, it. Right, but, 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 that, but that's what I'm trying to, to make sure that it's okay to have a conversation, but keep your eye on the prize. We got to talk about the money. There's more power in unity. numbers mm -hmm. and unity. Yes, I understand so that. Kermit the Frog can go to Congress and talk about reparations and talk, you know, gibberish. But if we don't hold him accountable or Congress accountable, then they're going to keep doing it. Now we're at an age in almost 2020, we have the new elections coming up where the Democrats know Democrats. Mm -hmm. whoever that they got to be talking something uh, like tangible for black people now. Otherwise, they're not going to get our votes. They might, like you say, get, I don't, not my words, your words. They might get Generation Fails. Mm -hmm. That's probably a sure thing. But the Generation new, Fail, those are the baby boomers. Yeah, those are the ones votes they'll probably get. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is like, nah. Exactly. Nah. They, so they got to, because they, Democrats need um, the majority of black people to vote for them. Yes. But I Period. want everybody, whatever side you're on, to pay attention. Because if Dan, here's what I'm going to look for out of Danny Glover and the, uh, the author guy. I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Uh, Tanashi uh, Coates. Tanashi Coates. I'm probably here's, saying it wrong. Yeah, but, it but, like but, it. but here's what I'm looking for. Yeah. When he's up there, I'm looking to listen to hear him quote how much it would be. Wait, wait. Well, he says it in his article. He, no, he, no, he no, exactly. About that. And, yeah. and he really lowballed that, but that's okay. But he, at least he had a number. But what I'm saying is that's what like, we got to pay attention to the. The fat meat, okay? To the fat meat of the issue, the economics of the issue. Because they can sit up there and quote, like we can sit up here and quote all day long what we need to do, whatever deal is. What's Congress gonna say? How are we gonna pay for it? That's the things we gotta look. We, we, they gonna pay for it by not getting our votes if they don't come up with something. And that's, that's what how I'm it saying. Works. And that's what I'm saying. Danny Glover, when they ask him questions, well, according to our statistics and the people that we've researched, whatever, we're talking about ten trillion dollars a year over a fifteen year period. Right. Well And what? I and then I want to hear Congress's yeah. response. And it's funny, watch how the the congressional black talkers will defend not doing it. Well we know that. We know that, but it's our fault. 2,000% our fault. Y'all fault. No, our fault. Y'all fault. The collective's fault for continuing to send those people, people to Washington. It is our fault that we allow people like Maxine Waters and Sheila Jackson Lees, God bless mm -hmm. her, and all the whole host of mm -hmm. them. John Conyers. All in of there them. so long to where you left in disgrace. It's our fault. That they keep coming back to the neighborhood saying, well, yeah, you know, this time we're going to. Oh, yes. But look what they're doing for DACA and the Dreamers. Right. But, but that's our fault, though, because we keep, you know, looking for the crumbs that they drop. But they if give they the, drop at all. They give the, you know, the big piece of chicken to DACA and, you know, the LGBTQ, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. community. And they give them the big piece of chicken right. and we get the crumbs and we're satisfied with that. And so it's our fault that yes. they've allowed to continue to dangle the carrot in front of us. Yes, I, I agree. Now with that. we're saying we want to bite that motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> also, also, like I said, please pay attention to that. If there are no economic numbers in this discussion, it's bullshit. The well, whole thing is a waste I of time say, because yeah. the congressional black talkers are just saying, "See, we're working. See, we're doing stuff. It's a distraction." They, listen again. Even if they go in there and say, well, we're going to talk about it. No. What you're going to do is talk about it or you ain't going to talk about it when it comes time for you to get my vote. Thank so you me. better talk about it while you've got the chance to do it. So Good again, point. like we, they have this saying called we the people. I don't think we really know what that means. Black people in every way, shape, or form have been used and abused and we <laughs> allow it to happen. We are no better, no disrespect, but we're no better than a domestic violent, uh, violence victim. Wait a minute, stop. No, stop. I did not abuse that woman. Yes, he did. <laughs> we're no better than Tina Turner, than when she stayed with somebody who was whooping her ass and she knew he was no good for her. Wait a minute. We need to be the Tina that at the end of the movie. Right. 
whooped his ass. Wait a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute. Watch him out. He said <laughs> that if she was going to check herself out of the hospital, he would have came to, you know. No. Right. And, that, and, that, and that's exactly what these Congress, especially right. these black Congress people or, you know, assemblymen, whoever they are, that's exactly themselves. what they do. Well, I know I didn't come through for you, but at least I picked you up from the exactly. hospital. I know I put you there. Uh, um, what's his name? Uncle Tom, um, number three in the house. Uh, John Lewis? No, number oh, three. Uh, Clyburn. Clyburn. Uh-huh. Uncle Tom Clyburn. He's been in research. 78 years old. And this man, this is why you guys got to pay attention. If he's saying it, what the rest of them, what are, what are they saying? I thought uh, welfare was reparations. He's just. That, that's the mindset yeah. of Generation Fail. But we made it. You get yours. How, but let me ask you this. How was he allowed to continue to be voted in after making such a stupid statement. I'm glad you asked that question. We have to get politics, uh, money out of politics. Hear you. Now, I, is that, but we got to put sense in the politics. Of course, of course. But the biggest problem is the money in the politics. He wouldn't be in the position that he's in if he wasn't willing to sell his fucking soul and the white establishment in South Carolina that backs him. Because he isn't getting his money from his constituents. That's for damn sure. But he can't get that money and be in that position to get the money if it wasn't for his constituents. And so he keeps right. making comments like but, that. But what I'm saying is, when you have money in politics, mm -hmm. you can put up signs, you can do that, and right. you just mislead. He wouldn't get that money if it came directly from his constituents. Right. But, again... You know, regardless of where he get the money from, he see that the money can't put him in office. He the the people and their votes put him in office. How do you know? That's the way it's supposed to work. The Russians could have hacked the ballots. Don't matter. Up until the Russians hacking ballots, that's how they get in there is through the people. The p like I wouldn't continue to vote for somebody no. who keeps dogging me and saying stupid I stuff. I agree with you, but I disagree with you. How he keeps getting in there, and especially all of these representatives in the black community. Apathy that is rampant in our damn community. Okay, but whether it's apathy, slapathy, whatever, we still <laughs> we still keep voting for them. Yes. Yes. If that the apathy goes to your your comment about I can Tina, well, I did come pick you up, and well, yes, you did. You did come pick me up, even though you put me in the hospital. Right. Right. You know. <laughs> no, but here, here, here's my thing. You get a little sound by I'm claiming my time. We love to be like you said, entertaining. Yeah, we do. Yeah, the Holy Ghost, you know. And, and we think, okay, there's another four, there's another two years for Maxine. She's a, she's fighting for me. But what has she done after she's reclaimed her time? Nothing. Did you reclaim our time? Wait, wait, remember she was saying, well, you know, we got to impeach him, whatever it is. They've silenced that. I ain't heard completely. from Maxine in a, 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 a coon's age, exactly. whatever the hell that is. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm not so, heard from her. So, you know, all in all, you guys need to pay attention. No matter what side of the fence you're on, Pay attention, because right now they're talking, and that is a good thing. I'm, I don't disagree with you on that. But if they're, to me, if they're not talking the economics of it, if that, is, if, that, if that isn't even brought up, it's a show, a dog and pony show. And you know what I really like about the fact that somebody like Danny Glover, who is an activist, is going to talk about, it, especially on something symbolic as Juneteenth, is because he represents the baby boomers, or in your terminology, generation, and generation fail. fail. So mm -hmm. if he's there. Speaking to Congress, that's going to show you. Yeah, how to but touch they're probably going to listen to him because he's considered one of their peers. Depending on what he says, mm -hmm. we don't know. Now, let me ask you this, and, and, and let me show you how slick the congressional black talkers are. They learn from Massa. Why yeah. would you have a uh, important discussion like this on Juneteenth? What are a lot of black people going to be doing on Juneteenth? Working. Working. <laughs> Where we're going to be out there barbecuing but think, but, but and doing all well, that Most other people stuff. did their Juneteenth stuff this past weekend or before mm. that. But I, I like it because it is symbolic. It's, you know, supposed to be the day that we were free on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, Gallows in Texas was the last one that mm -hmm. got it on June 19th. So that's why we sell it because they, no, we weren't all totally free. Mm -hmm. For those of you guys who don't know about Juneteenth. And so that's symbolic in that, okay, now that we are here on the day of uh, alleged freedom, mm -hmm. Let's talk about y'all freeing up some money now, because that was part of the promise when we yes. were let go or emancipated, if you will, mm -hmm. that we were going to get 40 acres in the mule. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. It did, but it did. Right. So I want you guys to pay attention to that. 
and all and, and while you're watching it or if you're out there eating your big piece of chicken and, and enjoying your family time you guys gotta remember th this is fact they didn't talk when they gave the Asians their money they didn't talk when they gave the Jews their money why America gave Jews reparations for something that we didn't do I will never understand. Because the Jews, the Asians, yes, and they the stick Spanish, together. And I they understand. They take a mighty blow. I understand. When they hold their money. Yes, I understand. But uh, so I want you guys to think about that, and you guys should be mad about that. It, you, you didn't cut the check. You should be saying the same thing that, that that a lot of us are saying. Cut the check. Cut the bullshit. You didn't do all that with them, and then you didn't ask them. Well, what are you going to spend the money on? It doesn't matter. Like you said, D. Why aren't you at the at, at, at invited up to uh, Washington because D said this you give us you cut us the check we're gonna put the money right back in the economy I mean if they were smart you know that's what they would like give it to them because mm -hmm. 97 percent of that is gonna come mm -hmm. back but while we are this is the one thing we can benefit from these so-called talks while they're talking we need to preach and teach and reach each other and say listen when it's not I don't believe in the if mm -hmm. when we get this right. money right. We need to talk to each other. Like, seriously, have this conversation. Don't take your ass and get no Jordans and, you know, weaves and gold. Let's put this money to work so we can be free of this oppressor and this devil that keeps mowing us down in cold blood, mm -hmm. locking us up, you know, disproportionate. Let's do something with this money absolutely. instead of giving it back to them. Otherwise, we don't need it. Right, you absolutely. Know? Um, I also want to bring up, and I, we talked about this in the Demetri K show, it's very important. How many of you guys remember... Uh, her name is Horsford. She was a lady that was found dead in Georgia. Hmm. Um, she had gone to a, a adult slumber party. They, oh. Some people are saying it's a swingers party, whatever yeah. it was. All the white women were there. It was a there. soccer mom party. Yeah, a soccer mom party. And the only black woman there, and she was the one that ended up dead. Right. Remember people like Sandra Vallon, lady, a traffic ticket. Oh, Sa Sandra or, Bland? Yeah, Sandra yeah. Bland. She ends up dead. All these mysterious deaths that are happening. Now, I know a lot of people might think, think that I'm crazy or whatever it is. Do you know what a ghoul is? A ghoul is like a um, like a ghost or a demon or something like that. Yeah, a yeah. ghoul or but um, you have these things that are Kamala Horsford. Horsford, Kamala yeah. Horsford. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if you guys haven't heard her story, you guys need to check it out because here's why I say keep remembering these these incidences. That county she was in was ran all the black people out of there in like oh, 1920 yeah. or whatever the deal is. It is so, you know, and her death was ruled an accident. Right, they said but, alcohol. Right, but if you look at some of the facts of the case, it does, just like Sandra Blonde, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, they're saying her alcohol level was 0.238%, which is dead. almost three times the right. legal limit. She'd be dead. For driving. Yeah, for driving, okay. But you, know, but you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, her injuries. Um, how many of you guys remember Mytrice Richardson? Mm-hmm. I remember. People, in all seriousness, you need to wake up. White supremacy is on the rampage. They're talking about marijuana and Xanax were also found in her system. Okay. Now, this goes back to what I've been saying about and I talk to my nieces and you know and people like that because people people never believe me that I, I ever smoke weed. They go, everybody does it. No one, everybody doesn't. The reason why I'm terrified of doing shit like that is just what Demetri K said to me years ago. You don't know what they're cutting that shit with. Right. All it takes is one hit, and your brain is fried. Now in the Mytrice Richardson case, even though that was suspicious, and by the way, Kamala Harris backed the law enforcement in that case. Black woman against black woman. Right. Just dogged him out. And uh, my Trish Richardson's dad even said, y'all vote for this woman, y'all a damn fool. Right. I have no doubt, Every of all the homeless people that I see, I saw a guy yesterday walking, just white boy, looked like a foot was in his ass, and he's trying to hold up his pants, and he just, he just frazzled. How does a person get like that? Oh, God, how much time we got? You know, and, and, and don't get me wrong. I know there's mental illness and stuff, but that isn't mental illness. What I saw wasn't mental illness. That was a guy that probably, you know, tried something real bad and it just fizzled the brain. It's a possibility. It's always a possibility. 
It's not going to happen to me. It could happen to anybody. You know, and, and that's a good thing, too, because a lot of times, you know, especially speaking about homelessness, mm -hmm. since that's where we're going to go with this, a lot of times, not saying you, yeah. but a lot of times people have preconceived notions about how people become homeless. Right. I think overall, a lot of people think, oh, they're just lazy. Right. Or, you know, um, whatever. Something mm -hmm. negative, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's not true. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you guys a story. I probably told you guys this once before. I um, was downtown Riverside doing legal stuff. Okay, gotcha. You weren't on university? I was actually, but that's not okay, what I, right, right, I was actually you, on university. You. you guys don't know, University Boulevard is where you know you do you get your trick in and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I wasn't doing yeah, that okay. thing. I was actually, you know, right. conducting business, if you will. So I ran across a guy who was homeless, and I thought I could start talking to him. He was a 23 years old young kid, and it was actually the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And normally he would go to the church to go get um, a hot meal and right. things like and that. He he's cleaned on up. the street. Mm -hmm. um, but they were closed that day because mm -hmm. it was the day after Thanksgiving. They sure. were closed. So he was talking to me. And so I, as I'm talking to him, I text my daughter because she was, I had to take the car. I said, bring him, um, bring him, bring him, bring him lots of cheeseburgers right. and right. a whole bunch of stuff. And she did. So she ended up, you know, and so while I'm waiting for him, he's telling me that he is homeless. Check this out. Okay. He is homeless because he urinating outside in public, as some people do. You shouldn't do it, but you he did. Go, you gotta go. Mm -hmm. A white woman walked by with her child, called the police, and they Through arrested the him mm -hmm. for sexual right. whatever it was. And, and he has exposure. to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. Ruined. Ruined. So he's on the street. He can't go stay in a homeless shelter. You know why? He's a, he's a sex offender. Mm -hmm. The church can't help him and let him stay and all that. You know right. why? He's a, he's a sex offender. He can't go to Georgia to live with his grandma because he's on probation, probation. or parole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy wow. is stuck. Right. And he's homeless. Mm -hmm. Can't feed himself. He's a kid. This guy yeah. is a baby. 23. And he can't feed himself. And so... A lot of times when we pass by people on the street, we think, ah, oh, you know, yeah. you know, they just done the other. No, he just violated because he's peeing, and Situation. she felt like she did. Like, keep moving. Why are you gonna call the police on him for it? We don't get into that type of thing in my segment. Okay. But <laughs> right, right. But you know, uh, but what I'm saying is that when it comes to the drugs now, in a lot of these situations, the Sandra Blonde, the uh, Mytrice Richardson, they said she was having a mental breakdown, but they, what they didn't tell you in the case, if you read the case, I read the case because I thought it was very interesting. No doubt the police killed that woman, in my opinion. Oh, for sure they did. Okay. However, she was under the influence of marijuana, which is, yeah. which is not a crime. Which is not a crime. Okay, she's under the influence doing her thing, that's fine. But I'm finding in a lot of these cases, marijuana or some kind of drug is involved. Now, I'm not telling people what to do, what not to do. All I'm saying is for the young people out there, I'm telling you, in a lot of situations, you don't need to get high to have a good time. That's, that's my message. Just like you don't have to take your clothes off? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to take your clothes off. Who's saying that? Uh, uh, don't tell me. Uh, Jermaine... Ah, don't tell me. Jermaine, tell me, tell me. Stewart. Stewart. Jermaine Stewart. All these other names yes. came to mind, but yeah. Yes. That was actually so, Jody Wiley's uh, buddy. Yeah, good, good buddy. friend. But, you know, and, and, and so, but a lot of these cases, there was a case of a girl in Virginia. She went to get her hair done and she was abducted, and um, they never found her body. The guy, the white guy that supposedly killed her was convicted within less than a year. Took a, that's how quick justice was over there. Uh, again, he alleged that he met her because they were trying to buy weed. And what I'm looking at with the rise in homelessness here in California, it seems that the homelessness has increased with the medical marijuana access that has increased. I'm not saying that that's the case. In my opinion, that's what it looks like. Or could it just be because the rent is too damn high? That's true, too. A lot of people cannot sustain themselves in the household. There's a, um, I read a study not too long ago about the working homeless. Yeah. People who have fairly good jobs, right, they, they just don't have, yeah, they're not physically full on living in their car, sometimes mm -hmm. with their kids. They go to school, They're saying they that work. that's a big thing. Yeah, people, you, you, you try to find a, um, 
so, uh, uh, the house for a reasonable price in you know Los Angeles or even this area, it's it's almost yeah, kind of hard to and, do. And the sad thing is, if you're going to get a house, let me give you guys some some economic advice real quick before I get back to my initial point. If you cannot maintain the house. Don't waste your money in buying a house because it's an investment and you're losing your investment because nobody, you know, you try to sell that house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gut you for everything you got because there's no way you're going to get top dollar when the damn roof has a hole in it and, you know, and this is not kept up, the shingles are missing and stuff like that. And that's one of our problems. You think, oh, I want to get a house, but can you maintain the house? you got to put that into your budget. If you can't maintain that house or get your damn lazy ass sons off their ass and make them go up there to that roof and put that shingle back on, hey, you're losing in your investment. And that's another reason why a lot of wealth is taken from the black community. Nobody got hurt more than the black community when the recession hit. Well, that that's true. However, at, 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 at these... <laughs> You know, because I just know somebody's going to get on here with the facts. So okay. so that's true. The black people lost the most. Yes. Two things. One is because of a lack of education, but more so because of predatory lending. lending. Yes. We, of uh, course. A lot of people, not just black people, but a lot of people suffer from the appeal to authority. Mm -hmm. So if I sit down with my real estate agent or the, my lender, and they're, because I don't know all the ends. I probably should, but... That's why you have lawyers that read contracts mm -hmm. and stuff because they know more than you. Or contact Donovan and Dimitri. And right, and even me, I would be like, listen, you know. <laughs> These are small right. Things. But so you have this is systemic racism, mm -hmm. institutional racism, where they purposely misled people, black of course, people. So of that's why. Right. But that's, what, that, that, that's, that's mostly why yes. we got hurt the no, most. No, but what I'm saying is yeah. in our community, uh -huh. Grandpapa, Mama had this home. You, you, you send it down the generation, it goes to the next kid, and they can't maintain it, even though the house is paid for. Every generation, mm -hmm. we start, we teach less. less. And understand? we should be teaching those things. If I give my daughter a house, mm -hmm. I die, mm -hmm. even if she was to sell it, I want you to, I don't want you to go trigger it off on red bottoms and right. all that. I want you to continue mm -hmm. the legacy, right. but we stop teaching, because we right. know people yeah. who've been left properties, mm -hmm. and they want to get up off it. They want right. to sell it and spin it up the money. Or they lose it because they can't mm -hmm. pay the tax. Right now in L.A., a stamped house, we're talking about less than 700 square feet, mm -hmm. goes for over a million dollars. A million dollars. Location, 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 location. And so we got to do better as a people. But back to these, these deaths. You guys, we got to stop forgetting these, these people that have been martyred and murdered outright in the street. If we were in any other country... We would have, they would have risen up by now and said, uh-uh, that's it. But we go on to the next thing. So back to your point about reparations mm -hmm. and why no one else really had to do as much. Stay focused. Yeah, as much talking as we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why. Right. We shouldn't have um, more and more black people being murdered by every damn mm -hmm. body. Get mad for we, mm -hmm. maybe not even that no more. Mm -hmm. And then going away. Right. We should we should be turning shit over. Exactly. We don't do that. And I'm not necessarily talking about physically, but just in general, we should be doing that, but we don't. We get we're not mad, united. you know, Facebook. Yeah, we're not united. And then we go away. Right. And I want everybody to remember this. So while you're out here capping, is that is it? Caping. Caping. I, I said caping. Cape. Yeah. While you, while you guys are out there caping for the poor Hispanics in cages and stuff, ask yourself this. Are they doing it for you for your plight? Are they backing you? I, I have yet to see the Congressional Hispanic Caucus in solidarity for reparations. I have yet to see any of my Hispanic neighbors in solidarity with me in about black people because you know what it is? They want to get their, their piece yeah, of the pie. Yeah, I want your black ass to have more money than them. And let me tell you something. Even if you gave everybody reparations, if we're already behind, you're, we're going to continue to be behind. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the Asians should get it, they should get it. If we're 200 years behind, we're going to continue to be 200 years behind. They don't, and they said the majority of white people in America do not want black people to get reparations. Right, because we would kick their asses economically. Not only that, e economically. they are innately, innately, mm -hmm. how can I say this? Just a little evil and racist. Yes. Absolutely. They are, it's just the truth. Like, absolutely. why are you... Why wouldn't you want me to be well? Why wouldn't you want my family to 
because okay. this system is established to having somebody on the bottom, and that somebody has always been us. And then that's oh well, you know, we didn't do anything, you know. Like, and because we're at the bottom and we are brainwashed, consumer, we are consumers. We are trained to be consumers. We reproduce nothing. And they know that, and we know that too, but we refuse to do anything about it. But anyway, you guys, keep your eyes on the prize. Watch this reparations things. Learn from it. Have an opinion about it. Keep focused. Keep these uh, candidates. We got the Democratic things coming up. If they are not talking uh, reparations specifically for black people, it is not reparations if everybody gets it. Right. Specifically for black people, you should not be giving them your vote. Hold these elected officials accountable. They cannot win without the black vote. You do have power. We're only 13% of the population. That is powerful. Tell that to the Democratic Party. That's right. That is powerful. No legislation could get moved in the Democratic House without the black vote. That's right. Those black representatives have to vote it. But do, do they care? No, they don't. Second hour, Demetri K., what are you going to be talking about? Oh, we're going to be talking about um, some relationship stuff okay. with some celebrities in the news. All right. Let, let, let's get to it. We're going we're gonna to pay some bills real quick, and we'll get right back to it. Stand by. Peace.